Hey everyone, welcome. Today we're tackling a leak code problem called count number of balanced permutations. It sounds a bit fancy, but don't worry, we'll break it down step by step. The goal is to find how many ways we can rearrange a given string of digits to make it. Let's see what that means. So we're given a string of digits, let's call it A. Permutation is just a rearrangement of these digits. For example, if this DM's carapies then is one of its permutations. Now what makes a permutation? It's balanced if the sum of digits at even positions, like the first, third, fifth digit and so on, is equal to the sum of digits at odd positions, the second, fourth, etc. Our job is to count how many distinct or unique balanced permutations we can make from the input string. Oh, and if the answer gets really big, we need to return it modulo 10 to the power of 9 plus 7. That's just a standard way to handle large numbers in these kinds of problems. Let's walk through an example. Say our input string num is, first, what are the unique ways to rearrange we have and let's check the digits at even positions are the first, at index 0, and the last, at index 2. Their sum is 1 plus 1, which is 2. The digit at the odd position is, at index 1. Its sum is just 2. Since the sum of even index digits, 2, equals the sum of odd index digits, also 2, is balanced. Now consider, even positions have, and sum is 3. Odd position has sum is 1. 3 is not equal to 1 so isn't balanced. Similarly, isn't balanced either. So 4 only, is a balanced permutation. The answer, is 1. Okay, what's the first idea that might pop into our heads? Well, we could try to generate every single unique rearrangement of the input digits. Then, for each rearrangement we'd check if it's balanced. But here's the catch. If the input string has, say, 60 digits, the number of possible rearrangements, which is related to n factorial, is absolutely massive. Way too big for a computer to handle in a reasonable time. So this brute force approach won't cut it. We need something more clever. Let's think about the properties of a balanced permutation. If the sum of digits at even spots equals the sum of digits at odd spots, let's call that common sum. Then the total sum of all digits in the string must be k plus k, which is 2 times k. This means the total sum of all digits must be an even number. If it's odd, we can't possibly split it into two equal halves, so the answer is zero right away. That's a nice little shortcut. If the total sum is even, then our target sum for the digits at even positions is total sum slash 2, and similarly for the odd positions. So the problem becomes, can we pick some digits for the even spots, and some for the odd spots, such that both groups sum up to this target, and we use up all the original digits, fitting them into the available even and odd slots. The number of even slots is roughly half the length of the string, and same for odd slots. Specifically, if length is n, even slots are n plus 1, then divided by 2, integer division, and odd slots are n divided by 2. This sounds like a job for dynamic programming. Instead of trying full permutations, let's build up a solution. We can consider each digit type, one by one. First, all the zeros, then all the ones, then twos, and so on, up to nines. For each digit type, say, we're looking at all that we have, we decide how many of these will go into even indexed positions, and how many will go into odd indexed positions. We can define a recursive function, let's call it, that takes, 1, the current digit underscore type we're working with, like then, etc. 2, the count underscore evens, how many items we've already assigned to even positions using previous digit types. 3, the sum underscore evens, what's the sum of those items already in even positions? A key insight is that if we know these three things, and we also keep track of the total digits and sums process so far, for all digit types before the current one, we can figure out the count underscore odds and sum underscore odds automatically. This helps keep our DP state smaller and more manageable, and we'll use memoization of course, to store results of subproblems we've already solved. So, our recursive function, let's call it solve, will take the current digit underscore value we're looking at, from 0 to 9, the count underscore of underscore digits underscore in underscore even underscore slots underscore so underscore far and their sum underscore in underscore even underscore slots underscore so underscore far. What happens inside? First, the base case. If we've processed all digit types from 0 up to 9, so idx becomes 10, we check. Have we filled exactly the required number of even slots? Is their sum equal to our target sum? And importantly, do the derived counts and sum for the odd slots also match their requirements? 
correct number of odd slots, and target sum. If everything matches up, we've found one valid way, so we return one, otherwise zero. For the recursive step, when we're at digit underscore value, say, we're placing our playdisa candy. We know how many we have in total. Let's say freck underscore of underscore 3s. We'll try putting i of these into even slots, where i can be from 0 up to freck underscore of underscore 3s. The rest, which is freck underscore of underscore 3s minus i, will go into odd slots. Let's call that j. We need to make sure we don't exceed the total slots available for even odd, or the target sum for even odd. If it's a valid partial assignment, we recursively call sol for the next digit type, idx plus 1, updating the counts and sums for the even group. The number of ways returned by this recursive call is then multiplied by a combinatorial factor. This factor represents the number of ways to choose i spots for the current digit type from the remaining available even slots, and the number of ways to choose j spots from the remaining available odd slots. This product is added to our running total for the current state. Before we start our main DP calculation, we need to set a few things up. First, count how many times each digit, 0 through 9, appears in the input string. Store these in a frequency array. Figure out the length of the string, n, then the number of slots for even index digits, and for odd index digits. Calculate the total sum of all digits. If it's odd, we're done. Return 0. Otherwise, calculate the target sum for each group, which is total sum divided by 2. It's also helpful to pre-compute prefix sums. One array will store the total count of digits up to a certain value, e, g, total count of zeros, plus ones, plus twos. Another will store the sum of their values, e.g., zero, times count underscore of underscore zeros, plus one times count underscore of underscore ones, etc. These help quickly find out how many digits, and their sum, were assigned to odd positions, based on what we assigned to even positions for previous digit types. And since we're using combinations, like n choose k, we'll need factorials and their modular inverses to calculate these efficiently, especially since we're working with a modulus. Finally, our memoization table, where we store results of solve, idx, cnt1, sum1, should be initialized to indicate that no states have been computed yet, maybe using minus 1. Alright, here's a glimpse of what the core recursive function might look like in Python. Don't worry too much about every single line right now, it's more about the structure. We have our solve function taking idx, current digit type, cnt1, count of even placed digits so far, and sum1, their sum. The base case, if idx is 10, we've considered all digit types. We then check if our cnt1 and sum1 match the targets for even positions, and if the derived counts and sums for odd positions also match their targets. If yes, return 1, else 0. We use a dictionary memo for memoization. The main part calculates how many digits and their sum have already been assigned to odd positions using previous digit types. cnt underscore odd underscore so underscore far sum underscore odd underscore so underscore far. Then we loop. i is how many of the current idx digit go to even slots. j is the rest, for odd slots. We check if adding these i and j digits keeps us within the allowed counts and sums for both even and odd positions. If it's valid, we make the recursive call for idx plus 1. The result is multiplied by the ways to choose i spots from remaining even slots and j spots from remaining odd slots. This gets added to our answer all with modulo arithmetic. Finally, we store the result in memo and return it. The initial call would be solve, 0, 0, 0.